Hello, today I'm going to be covering the new Janelle Monae album called Dirty Computer, and Janelle Monae is an insanely talented goddess. Her past material has meshed genre influences together such as contemporary R&B and art pop and neo soul and little touches of hip hop pretty effortlessly, and conceptually she's kind of come back to themes of femininity and cultural pride and Afrocentrism, pretty much just being okay with exactly who you are and embracing that person, what makes you special and unique, and it's all very important empowering and just wonderful. And she's definitely not been lazy with coming up with creative ways to convey these messages. Just look at the clear sci-fi angle to her 2010 effort, The Ark Android, just a monster of an album that makes it really difficult to uh, choose my favorite album of 2010 because My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy came out that year, but they're like on the same freaking level, like dear god. Now you're definitely going to notice right off the bat with this album that she's going in a more straightforward direction lyrically and sonically. I mean, with, from a production standpoint in this album, this is a little bit more commercially driven, more accessible, but at the same time it does mix these genres that she's dabbled in in the past. It definitely has a Prince vibe to it ever so slightly more with this than say the Electric Lady or the Arc Android and she has noted that Prince is her biggest influence. You might be a bit caught off guard at least on first listen from how blunt and straight to the point a lot of these lyrics are and there are a few moments that I still feel are missteps but for the most part I think that both the sonic aspects and the lyrical aspects of this album are pretty much in perfect harmony with each other. So these are simple compositions with pretty good hooks, and I think that they work for the most part, but at the same time, even with repeated listens of this album, it's been this thing that's been hanging out in the back of my head, that these songs are just more mild and more watered down than her past work has been, unfortunately. I do still like wish that these songs were more dynamic and hard-hitting sometimes, there was more variation from track to track. Getting into the songs here, Crazy Classic Life, from a production and lyrical standpoint, pretty much just embodies everything that this project is about on a grander scale. I mean, the vibrant and energetic production has slight 80s influence, like I mentioned. Like, it's pretty punchy, but it still definitely feels like it could show up on the radio today. Also, it would have worked really well as a single. Like, I don't know why this wasn't released instead of, like, I like that or something, but, you know whatever. I do really enjoy the conceptual approach to this album being almost a little rebellious and like, fuck you, I'm gonna do everything in my power to make my life fun and positive for myself despite all the obstacles that I face as a black woman living in this country. So yeah, that's definitely a standout track in the record that I would actually consider coming back to and screwed. Oh my god, I love this song. This song has done nothing but grow on me, seriously. Yeah, you can't even deny that this track is really clever and a total banger. She's comparing like sex and the trash state of the world from kind of like a dry humor angle saying like, hey, you know what? If this is the only good thing that I can get out of life, then I'm gonna go have sex. And that transitions into also one of my favorite tracks here, Django Jane, although I do acknowledge that there are a few bars that are kind of questionable. I think the overall theme of this song is like kind of just the somber note that this project needed. It's basically just about black girl magic and how despite dealing with oppression all through her career, she still accomplished so much in spite of these obstacles that she has to face pretty much as a black woman artist. And it kind of just serves as a general statement to anyone dealing with similar things that they can do anything despite the systematic bullshit that they have to deal with. And from a production standpoint, I mean, it is pretty simplistic. It's just like low string notes, strap style drums, but I think it kind of makes sense in the context of the song. I mean, it's pretty like lyrically conscious and that's more like what you're supposed to pay attention to and it does still create a nice atmosphere, especially when the strings kind of transcend into violins and violas. Haha, <laughs> cue the violins and violas, am I right? Pink, I'm kind of confused with my feelings on because I feel like I should like this better. Like every time I listen to it, I'm like, why isn't this clicking with me? Like there's nothing necessarily wrong with it. I guess I just feel like a collaboration between Grimes and Janelle Monáe should be like this epic, big, like fully realized thing. But I mean, this song just comes across as underwhelming every time. I enjoy like the snaps and the little staccato synth lead, and it kind of does erupt into that like guitar part near the end. But for some reason, I just feel like there could have been more 
done with this song, although lyrically I do think it is pretty clever besides the lyrics in the pre-chorus, which to me just come across as a little bit fake deep, sort of generic. And I do wish Grimes was a little more present vocally, like she can do something really cool and eccentric here, but she's kind of just fading into the background. But it's pretty hard to deny that Make Me Feel is one of the best songs. Here's just three minutes of pure bliss and passion. It's a synth funk dance pop single, kind of starts off with like hand snaps and clicks in this momentary descending distorted bass and these peppy guitars that kind of come through and dominate it by the end. And oh my god, her vocal climax here is absolutely orgasmic and totally calls her Prince. Like, this moment in particular, I was like, holy shit, that's dead on. Like, that is Prince. But getting into some more missteps, I got the juice. Listen, I'm sorry, but I just cannot get past the lyrics behind this. Like, okay, Pharrell's verse? Like, what the fuck was that? I'm sorry. Like, you can say whatever you want about this song from a production standpoint. It is kind of cool. It almost reminds me of, like, a tad bit of, like, early 2000s like R&B like just a touch though it's still definitely like an energetic 2018 style of synth pop um but like it, yeah no I'm sorry this, this track lyrically like I can't this is going too far <laughs> moving on I like that from a production standpoint just feels a little bit lazy not really as well fleshed out as most of the other songs here which kind of takes away from it but also lyrically I find the hook to be really obnoxious a little crazy a little sexy a little cool a little rough around the edges but I keep it smooth again it's cool like the intention is fine but it's just the way that it's said it's just a little bit too blunt even though I know that that was an intentional thing with this record I feel like she could have said it in a different way that would have made it sound better don't judge me I have mixed feelings on I mean it's a pretty subtle song it's got like funky little synths and bass and strings and delicate guitars going on in the background but it does kind of drone on for just a tad too long for my liking but still it has like some redeeming qualities to it and I think lyrically it's a little bit stimulating it's about how like being afraid of uh, someone knowing you too much that you have an infatuation with because you think that they will stop liking you if they fully know who you are and although it is cool that Americans kind of calls back the most obviously to artists like Prince and Michael Jackson of any other track here it's a nice sonic moment I do think that lyrically yeah it is a bit cringe, especially the hook again, but still, I mean, I suppose it's a good closer conceptually, like, it makes sense with everything that this record's talked about. Overall, I do think this thing is a pretty good record. I don't necessarily think it's incredible or one of my favorites of the year. I do think it could have been pushed a little bit further. I have been dealing with this thing where I desperately want to love this album, I feel like, but I, I just don't think that it's gonna happen. I don't really think that this has lasting stay power, at least for me. I don't really picture myself coming back to any tracks other than like Screwed, maybe Django Jane. But yeah, thanks for watching this review and I'm gonna, oh, I forgot to say, I'm gonna give this thing a six. Um, thanks for watching this review and I'll see you next time.